Hey guys, it's Nick from Retro Games HQ, and today I am going to be talking about Power World, which is a game that's just been announced, literally, just a few days ago, it's just been announced, it's going to be a monster taming game, it's not even in early access yet, but with its one promotional video with no extra information about it really, we've already had a huge amount of controversy regarding it, uh, the Twitter video got 2.2 million views within just a few days, and I mean within a few hours of it going up, it had so many views, so much controversy, and the YouTube video itself, I think, has over 340,000 views right now. You can find that video in the description below. Do not watch this uh, this video if you've not watched the 1 minute, 30 second Power World uh, promotional video for the announcement. It is worth seeing it, whether you like it or not. It, it looks nice, to be quite honest, and it's a bit interesting. Even if you dislike it in the game concept, it is an interesting promotional video. So, let me just go through the controversies, I'll list them, then I'll talk about them later. So the first one is similar designs. Some people are like, well that monster looks like this monster from this other franchise, etc. You have guns and monsters, where you have one, they're in the same game, two, a monster actually uses a gun, and also three, you have the most controversial part, which is that, well, a monster was used as a shield and was shot at with guns. So some people have taken an issue with that. You also have a problem of uh, the guns look a little realistic, and it kind of breaks the look. It doesn't fit in with the look, so some people have complained about that. You have this blatant enslavement of the monsters in that you can just take them away. You just put them in a cage, take them away, and make them do sweatshop work. So in a way, it is uh, slavery depending on how you look at it. And let's see, what else is there? Yes, we have reused crypto, uh, sorry, Craftopia assets. And Craftopia is a game that they've made, Pocket Pair has made in the past. We're going to be talking about Craftopia a little bit later in the video, along with Over Dungeon, which was the previous game before Craftopia that Pocket Pair made, which is the developers uh, for Power World. And that is relevant, by the way. But some people complain about reused Craftopia assets. Some people complain that Craftopia is still in early access. And I'll say EA. I don't mean Electronic Arts. I mean early access. Now, a critique that I actually have is it could be um, too large of a scope. For like, it's got too many concepts. And if they don't implement it well, it might be not good at anything. Another one's also that the dev team is uh, too spread thin on personnel and maybe resources. So that's the list of controversies. Let us get into it. So the first one's going to be about the similar designs. And I've already made a list of all the similarities that I saw. So I'm going to list them real fast. It's going to be the wolf looks like Lycanroc. You have the zebra kind of looking like Zepstrika, but yellow. You have the protagonist looking like the Mithrin protagonist, which not long ago Mithrin's Kickstarter got finished. You have at one point the Lycanroc looking uh, monster sliding in like the uh, Kita, you know, uh, slide on his motorcycle, which is something I've not seen other people talk about, but it's something that many... Uh, Anime and manga and stuff has reused that kind of form of them sliding, and I think it is relevant, though. It all kind of goes into it. Then you have two scenes where it looks like it comes from the Anatons trailer. It's very similar. It's where these monsters power up the base that you can build with their electricity, and you also have the scene where there's a garden and the monsters are watering it, and... <laughs> Another thing with that scene is that actually one of the water monsters you see in the Power World promotional video looks pretty similar to the Anatons water, like Anaton, that um, was also watering the garden in the Anatons trailer. So there definitely is a similarity there. And you also have the sheep that looks like Wooloo. Of course, I'm just saying it's a sheep. It does have some Digimon um, aesthetic almost feeling when there's uh, a breed, when you have the breeding where two monsters come together for an egg. You have the Sea Dragon, which of course is going to be similar to Gyarados and Seedramon. Well, hello, it's a Sea Dragon. Uh, okay, and then you have a monster that looks like Bowser, especially when he spins upside down and he breaks apart this rock. You have Nessa, but white, on the Sea Dragon monster. 
And then you have someone's probably going to eventually compare it to Breath of the Wild because it's open area. Just like any new open area game, someone compares it to Breath of the Wild, most likely. So going and talking about the critique of being like, it's too similar. Their, their critique is, hey, it's way too similar to just copying other games, other franchises, and they say this in a way that it's negative. In fact, some will go even to be like, oh, this is a copyright infringement. No, 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 no. So let's go through that. Now, first off, art, that's all about copying. Imitation, uh, learning. Sorry, but human action overall is about learning. And sometimes that maybe isn't a one-for-one -one copying, but it's pretty similar copying. There's nothing wrong with copying, whether in art or not. Is it good? Is it not? Are you know things? Uh, are you trying to deceive people as if it's completely original? Then sure, there's a problem, but it's not with the art; it's with the deception. So even if um, it was one for one copy, I'm gonna be honest. Does not matter if there's no deception. Now some people are gonna say, "Well, copyright." I, I'll cover that in a second. But even if they're first off, this is not one for one. Period. It's a wolf. That looks like Lycanroc, but it's a wolf, you know? Uh, yeah, it may look like Gyarados, but ultimately, it's a sea dragon. And I don't think they would say uh, that no other franchise has monsters like it. It's not like they're trying to be, oh, well, we're the first ones that made it. Well, again, if it's not one for one, it doesn't even matter. Art is about imitation. It's about copying. It's about looking. Don't tell me... Um, that 99% of artists didn't get inspiration from other artists. They're not original. Uh, there's nothing wrong with copying or coming close to copying. Even if it is one for one, it doesn't matter as long as they're not trying to deceive people into thinking it's their original designs. Now, going to copyright, which is, I think, where a lot of people kind of bring in more emotion, actually. It's confused. So, many of the object, uh, objections are just based in copyright law. Uh, so, what happens is you get this taken from a legal thing to a moral problem. Where you go from, well, it's against the law to it should be against the law. It's wrong. They're copying. This breaks copyright. And so, people... I mean, I understand the tendency for people to want to be like, hey, it's the law. It's what you should do. I completely understand. Sadly, in today's world, what is law is not always what should be done or what should be followed. And that's the same when it comes to copyright. But people do bring this from a legal thing into a moral problem. Now, that is a problem because, um, and I'll be covering it later. Hold on. Well, I'll, I got to get my stuff in row. Got to get my ducks in row. Let's do this right. So copyright law, first off, is un justifiable ideas are not ownable because there cannot be conflict about them what can be owned is scarce resources or conflictable resources resources that can have physical interpersonal conflict you cannot own an idea because you cannot exclude others from it it is not conflictable you can't wait if you say well i own this idea or i own this art no one can replicate it you're not if you just say you own that idea, first off, it's not something that's ownable. Knowledge is not something that's ownable. You can have it in patterned in different mediums, but what you would be claiming to own would be the mediums themselves, the conflictable resources, as uh, Stephen Kinsella, which is a patent attorney, calls it conflictable resources. And here's the problem with that. People own what people own. Now, that may seem tautological, circular, but not really. Because if I own a piece of paper, I own an ink pen, and I want to make a one-for-one -one copy of someone's art, well, I own that paper, I own that ink, I own that freaking pen. No one has the right to tell me I can't do that with that, like with my stuff. Because then you're coming and claiming that because you've made something somewhere else, you're making this arbitrary claim that, oh, that piece of paper over there that I've done nothing with, nobody get, you know gave it to me. I have no claim to it, but you know what? Now, because I made something, I have a claim to it. That creates conflict, and this gets a little bit deeper, but uh, rights are all about avoid, uh, avoiding interpersonal conflict, 
uh, and it would also create a there, there's many other problems I'm not going to go into if you're interested in it Stephen Kinsella uh, S-T-E-P-H-A-N then space K-I-N-S-E-L-L-A he has been a patent lawyer or attorney for quite some time longer than I've been alive and many of you all have been alive and he's been against intellectual property from uh, very early on he has a very solid book called Against Intellectual Property uh, very simple not hard to understand very small I would encourage anyone to go read it and so copyright law is unjustifiable so what happens when you bring this unjustifiable legal law you know this law into the moral realm well then you got even bigger problems because now you have moral problems based on something that's unjustifiable but it gets worse because so many people are ignorant just straight up ignorant of copyright law and they think that copyright law applies to things that it does not apply to so this amplifies the amount of things uh, that can be objected to legally and morally and by increasing this you're also increasing more of the emotional side of it this just pure emotivism hey that's wrong hey that's similar to this that's wrong because it's stealing their pro you know their art that's stealing that's violating their copyright it's like just because it looks similar doesn't mean it's necessarily even infringing upon their copyright that's not that's not how it goes it's pretty much the original work and derivative works so if it's derivative there's a problem at least according to legal uh, modern western u.s based copyright law it is a problem it is but uh copyright is unjustifiable so it's not a problem and on top of that you cannot copyright the an underlying idea that's why pokemon or shin megami tensei or dragon quest cannot copyright the underlying monster taming uh idea that's why it can't be like Pokemon, can't be like, oh, well, we have a seal. We have a seal monster. You cannot create a seal monster because they cannot copyright the underlying idea. As long as it isn't obviously Pikachu with, that's a derivative from Pikachu, like instead of black, uh, black eyes, it's got red eyes, then it doesn't even violate copyright. And on top of that, like I said, it's unjustifiable. Now... Another thing, phenomenon that we're seeing is that it's a po that things are Pokemon clones. It's a Pokemon ripoff. I've just covered this. You can't copyright underlying ideas. This isn't Pokemon Uranium, which is a derivative from Pokemon. Even if it didn't have the name, it would have the creatures, and it would obviously be a derivative. This is not the case, period, for these monster taming games. They're not ROM hacks. They're not fan games. They're games in and of themselves. On top of that, if the game's good, um, and that's all that matters, period. So uh, even objecting to Pokemon Uranium would be unjustifiable, citing copyright, because copyright's unjustifiable. There's nothing wrong with copying or making derivative of stuff uh, in the art world or really yeah, almost, uh, almost anywhere, pretty much anywhere, because that's what we do with action. We learn. And that requires imitation, copying, kind of slightly altering things, no problem. It doesn't even pretend to be official. I mean, they're not they're not selling they didn't sell Pokemon Uranium. They didn't try to deceive people into thinking this is an official thing. And they didn't try to deceive buyers into thinking uh Pokemon Uranium's an official thing. So that even that objection is just wrong on, on every front of it. It's it's fun. And that's what's all it's what a game's supposed to be. It's supposed to be challenging. It's supposed to be fun on some level. That's all that matters. Who cares? Or rather, you shouldn't care really unless, I mean, okay, subjective preference. If you don't want something that looks exactly like a Pokemon game, fine. But that's you have to realize that's a subjective preference. To have a real moral problem with something that you can actually say this is grounded in reason and not just in some, this is my preference. Um... You, you, you have to have pretty much just reason to object to it. And there's no reason to object to something, even if it's one for one, if it's fun. Beyond subjective preferences just isn't because copyright's unjustifiable and the underlying ideas of copyright is unjustifiable. Nothing wrong with copying. And again, 
It could be a game that looks completely different. If it sucks, it sucks, right? Hey, is it fun? That's what matters when it comes to a game. Is it fun? Now, the guns and monsters critique, I know it went a little long, but it, oh, it covers so much more than just PAL World, to be quite honest. And again, Stephen can sell against um, intellectual property. You can read it for free, and I'll have the link in the description below. Um, there's no copyright in it. Despite there being a copyright warning in the front, uh, there's that's the uh, people who print it. That's their problem, not the authors. So, gun and monsters... You know, having them together. Well, from what I've seen, these are just emotional arguments. And I think it gets amplified because these are like cute monsters with what I'm going to say is harmful guns. You may think, well, all guns are harmful. No, because you can have little bubble guns in games, you know, and oh, yeah, they get hurt, but it's not like a bullet just hitting their skin, just bam, bam, bam. You know, so it's this jarring, like, you have this cute stuff, and then you have this realistic gun that's actually shooting bullets, and it looks like it's actually doing damage, you know? Um, so I think that's what has gotten people's emotions to increase, is that kind of, these are cute things that are looking like they're being hurt. So I understand that, but what's happened is, um, you know, you can also say there's animal cruelty. But here's the problem. We've been fine with shooting animals in games for a long time now. It's a traditional thing. Uh, or stance. It's just a thing we can do. There's really no problem. Of course, someone may say an appeal to tradition, but there's a reason why we have that tradition. Now, there's good reason as it's fiction, <laughs> and there's no real life harm that comes from it. So when found, when fiction's found disturbing, uh, taking an issue um, with the art itself. It's unreasonable as it didn't make itself and it doesn't interpret itself. So having problem with like the piece of uh, paper uh, with ink on it or with paint on it itself is mistaken, right? Because ultimately it didn't make, there's no, it didn't input a meaning to it. It isn't interpreting itself. It's not getting any enjoyment. It literally cannot. That's an impossibility. Now, any problem needs to be taken up with with uh, people like with the creator with those who spread the art with those who are interpreting it in disturbing ways and enjoy it in some kind of morally sick fashion you know um if you have a game where you torture people you know what a hundred thousand people could play it none of them could be uh morally disturbed people or it could be that there's somebody out there that is taking um, they're living kind of vicariously. They're kind of being like, oh, I'm torturing this person and I'm getting off on it. I'm thinking of it. I love it because I'm imagining me actually torturing real people. Then you've got a problem. <laughs> it's not the problem with the art. It's the problem with the person. Um, so there's no reason to even believe that it that the makers enjoy or revel in needless harm to animals, like real life animals. And the same can be said about uh, the people who are spreading it, the people who will enjoy it. There's no reason to believe that they just love to just torture animals and ha and shoot them for fun. And that's all there is to it. Just this morally sick, oh, ha, 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 making something cute be hurt. If it's fiction and they ain't really meaning it in some kind of, enjoying it in some kind of morally sick way, it's not a problem. So if it results in, so it results in no real harm, uh, nor does it indicate some kind of morally diseased, a creator, nor does it seem like uh, something that would lead itself to some morally deprived individuals enjoying it, enjoying the fictional harm on some deep emotional level that's kind of rooted in um, a desire for something to happen in the real world. You know, so you can't really object to the art itself, but what you have to do is look at how people interpret it or what the artist uh, meant by it. You know, um, yes, if the person who created the thing to shoot these, um, you know, uh, monsters loves getting little, you know, cute animals and just likes to shoot them for fun or wants to do that and thinks of it, you know, not even for, to eat or for sport, but just ha 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 ha, it's fun, then yes, we, ha we have a problem, but that is not the case here so there's no problem there should be no problem because it doesn't result in real life harm nor does it indicate some kind of morally sick um enjoyment you know so 
related to this though is the realistic gun designs which uh dr uh cielo cefalo um i'm i may be messing up his name i'm going to re-listen to the interview or discussion i had with him which hopefully will be up by the time this video comes out if you've not watched it go watch it it's it's a long discussion we cover a lot but honestly it's fantastic you're not gonna generally get this uh, kind of discussion in discord servers or on youtube or twitter especially this in depth and even in the best channel I know to discuss this stuff, I think that we still had an exceptionally good um, discussion for that. Now, this is actually a critique I agree with. It is jarring. The real gun designs are jarring, and it's an exception to the aesthetic. Uh, and the thing is, it creates kind of a contradictory piece of art without bringing value from having this contradiction because there's sometimes art that's contra has contradictory art styles in it but it brings there's a value there's a reason to it this just seems like bringing something more realistic into it and not bringing anything of value to it to the game uh in relationship to the uh art form or the art style rather but it does create kind of like oh that's like a Real AR, you know, there. What the heck? You know, it's jarring. You didn't expect it. It doesn't fit in with anything else, and there's no value in it. So I think that actually is something that is a problem. Uh, just like, uh, was it uh, Dr. Cielo's following? I'm messing up his name. Also mentioned um, that with Shadow of the Hedgehog, which does make it kind of look edgy and jarring. Uh, doesn't bring value to the game. Now, you have also this small problem of you're throwing an electrical monster into a lake and shocking stuff. Well, one, it's not real life. Secondly, I think as an in-game thing, it's actually pretty cool because there's actually, um, it adds a use for that monster that expands its out-of-battle options. So I think it actually adds, it adds a, maybe a cool little game mechanic, you know? Or maybe it's a cutscene and it adds a little bit to the game or to the life of it. Like, that seems a little bit more realistic, right? If you want to fish... Uh, you don't have to go get dynamite to, to blow out all these monsters. It's just like, hmm, I need to capture or eat some monsters. I'm going to throw in my uh, electrical monster. I don't know what they're going to call him, pal monsters, but I'm guessing pals, maybe. Uh, hence the name, I'm wondering. I'm guessing. And, it I mean, it makes sense, lore-wise. It, it It's not real life. Ah, well, you know, but I've seen that as an objection. I think it's a small, almost useless objection that falls apart pretty quickly. Again, if you say, well, personal preference, cool. But that's not something, that's not appealing to a reason. It's just like, hey, emotion, yeah, how it makes me feel. Okay, cool, 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 cool. I have no problem with that. If you don't like it, you don't like it. Not every game has to be uh, likable by everybody, to be quite honest. So if you're just like, I don't like this, objective preference, it's not me going after you. But what I am saying is maybe we have similar values in art and stories and monsters and things like that. And you have an objection that if you have those values falls apart uh so you know maybe we have pretty similar values you think it's controversial i don't think it's controversial so that's why i'm bringing up these reasons because i'm trying to appeal to some kind of common value and get you to realize you should not object to it if you really have those values if you want to be uh consistent uh you shouldn't have it you should not believe in those things so you have the enslavement and sweatshops. Of course, you did have them turning some monkeys with a like leaf on their head, turning a big wheel thing or whatever. I don't know what the heck that's going to be about. But the enslavement of monsters in the monster taming community is tradition. Again, you might say, well, it's tradition. It doesn't mean it's good. Well, there's a reason why it's tradition and why it's not wrong and why it's really not been objected to besides some... Um, you know, fundamentalist Christians like in the late 90s, as we all have memed before and know about. <laughs> um, I mean, one, it's not real life. Again, you're not really getting some kind of sick moral thing off of it. Uh, you're not really not a problem there. So there's no real life. Um, yeah, no harm. No morally sick enjoyment to be found. Okay, what's the big deal then? There can be no big deal other than a subjective preference. Um, on top of that, uh, what's happening 
in particular, the reason why there's so much emotion behind this in particular is because the veneer of enslavement of these monsters, which is only enslavement if they're even sentient. Uh, and we but we don't even know if they're sentient. So if they're not in, if they're not sentient, it doesn't even matter. Um, but it's because of sweatshops. It's because there's a reflexive moral outrage because of many of moral objections to real life sweatshops. But again, this is not real life. And uh, I think some people also object to it because he didn't expect it with the cute look. At the beginning, it's like, oh, that's cute. And then it's like, oh, my God, you know, what the heck? Why is those uh, monsters being flown away in that cage? Sweatshops, guns, this monster being shot. Like, <laughs> it was suddenly, like, bam. It was definitely there. They put that together for a shock value. Um, of course, that is a kind of a side. Sweatshops aren't even inherently bad okay that's sweatshops actually help the poor uh the alternatives is not good and then people want to say low wages well these people are going to sweatshops because they think they can make better money or better conditions in farming or maybe not even farming maybe not even having a job there's a reason why the progression has been from agriculture to sweatshops pretty much anywhere it's because it seems like millions and billions of people have thought sweatshops are a superior choice they're the better choice you may say working conditions the problem with working conditions is that you have to view it as a part of a wage now if you want to increase the working conditions in sweatshops the problem is they can cut back on employees making people people unemployed screwing them then you also with specific or certain demands you might also have uh, hey we're improving this working condition but we're going to make this condition work you know, um, maybe hours increases. And then third, when working conditions improve, you have to view that as a package with a wage, and they might lower the wage. It might be like, well, I did pay him two bucks a month, but or two bucks a, a day or hour, but um, this factors in. This new improvement factors in for like fifty cents, so I'm gonna be putting them a dollar fifty. You know, where the effective wage increase just it doesn't happen. So, and on top of that, uh, a lot of people, of course, I think it goes into child labor. But the problem is, these people have their kids working for a reason. Um, so, what happened in 1993 was actually there was a Child Labor Deterrence Act in which banned the imports from countries employing children. So, Bangladesh garment companies fired almost 50,000 children because of this new law. Because we couldn't buy... The U.S. couldn't buy garments or stuff from any countries that employed child labor. Now, what ended up happening? Well, 50,000 children that were working for a reason were put out of work. I mean, even Paul Krugman said about, about this. I mean, I don't even like Paul Krugman, but Paul Krugman. The direct result was the Bangladeshi textile factory stopped employing children. But did the children go back to school? Did they return to happy homes? Not according to Oxfam, which found that the displaced child workers ended up in even worse jobs or on the streets, and that a significant number were forced into prostitution. Sometimes things in the world suck. This is me saying it. Sometimes things in the world suck. Sometimes there's no good option. Sweatshops, do they suck? Yes. Hey, if we could have no more sweatshops because people were rich enough, thank God. 100% automate that crap. But we're not at that point in the world. The reality is the alternatives are worse for these people. So even there, the motion is drawn on often incorrect things, incorrect assumptions or knowledge. Now, going on to the next one. I know this is actually getting a bit lengthy, and I made a script, kind of, and I thought, oh, I'm going to make it like 15 minutes. Yeah, that ain't happening. So, okay. The next one, I believe, is going to be, yes, reused Craftopia assets. That's what I've seen a lot. <gasps> They're reusing assets. Well, who cares? That's my personal, that was my immediate response, but there's more, there's more reason to it. So, first off, uh, it takes away from the game none at all. It's not like they're like, it's not like, uh, hey, we're taken from this game that doesn't look anything like Pal World. And we're putting in here. Craftopia looks, the aesthetic looks extremely similar to Pal World. So it doesn't take away from the game. So some assets uh, can be used. Well, here's the thing. If you use the same assets, imagine a game uses the exact same assets from a different game. 
you can still use those assets and create a completely different experience. But here's the thing. A lot of these aren't one for one recreations. These aren't one for one assets. These aren't reusing asset. They're reused assets. And a lot of these assets are actually new. The monsters, they're new. Heck, the cow. The cow that is cutting the wheat is a different cow than what you see on the Craftopia Steam page. There's a screenshot of you dumping cows into like a stew or something. And um, they're, they're actually different cows. So even then, they did not reuse those assets. But to the extent they did reuse those assets or take those assets and modify them so they didn't have to create them completely, it decreases the costs and the labor hours, other things being equal i doubt uh, importing them those assets required more money or more labor hours than to completely recreate them so here's a few things that are positives to the extent that they are reusing assets or uh, barely touching them so it allows for a possibly faster turnaround in the game development it makes the development easier which may not seem like much, but stress and development can impact the game and also obviously it impacts the devs. Uh, and I think people would prefer if you could get the same game with less stress on the devs, same timeline, everything, people would take the less stress on the devs. But you also can get more content because you're not using this money and labor hours that you might otherwise use for creating new assets. You're using it on other things, new, a um, new mechanics or new assets or uh, different parts of the game or optimization things like that so also the costs of the new assets could have changed how the game will be made it could be well where our costs are up we can't do this we can't do this or it could be that they could have evaluated and be like oh, man with the cost of creating new assets we cannot even make this game right now or ever so it could have completely changed how the game was to the point of not being made you know so it also allows for higher profits which some if not most to be honest will be reinstate uh, will be re reinstated wow reinvested in the future uh for more development maybe dlc or something like that or more updates who knows of course you could be like it could be the case that then it could be the case that reusing assets actually would lead to lower profits because it doesn't fit the game as much but that would be an accidental thing. We have no reason to believe that's the case, but we do have a reason to believe that this is decreasing costs and wouldn't really affect the demand for it. So, you know, probably allowing for higher profits. And profits don't go under uh, freaking beds, pretty much. They get reinvested. And, wow, if they do go to the people making the game, what a horrible crime. Uh, sorry, but... <laughs> Sorry, not sorry, but Craftopia Early Access. That's something that I've seen discussed a lot with Pal World. The problem being like, hey, they still have this other game in Early Access, but they're wanting to make another game. Not only are they wanting to make another game, but they're working on it. They've not even completed what they've started. And this looks like a recipe for disaster, but there's actually, I think, three reasons that that understandable concern can be mitigated i think there's here's reasons that mitigate the concern the reasonable completely reasonable concern actually that was one of my concerns at the beginning to be honest so the first one i have down is craftopia has eleven thousand reviews on steam with an overall very positive rating now lately they've had some not so good ratings but go read them it's about them starting a new game so i'm not going to take those into consideration especially considering it's not about craftopia but they have eleven thousand reviews which is insane first off it's early access to eleven thousand reviews with a very positive rating that says at least something and why you shouldn't be as concerned as what you might be so second is that craftopia still receives what seems like decent often updates it's not abandoned so they're still updating it they're still it's not like they're just abandoning an, a game early on to go on to this one also, Power World has its own five-member team, development team. This, I've seen this by a community manager on the Pocket Pair Discord. There are 15 members on the Craftopia team, and there are five members on the Power World team. And from what I can tell, they are, there's no intersection. 
There's no overlap between the members. It's its own team. Period. So that should make you worry less. Now, I would say there may be there may be about two reasons to actually worry when it comes to Craftopia and EA and stuff. Actually, it talks about Over Dungeon, which is the previous game they made before Craftopia. So Over Dungeon is a quote unquote finished game, according to reviews. It they don't have an early access. They say it's been fully released, but the reviews makes it sound like, which is about 2,000 of them, it does make it sound like it was not finished. So there's a reason to worry. It sounds like they didn't get it finished and moved on to Craftopia. For my, I, don't, I don't even know if they've done an update recently for Over Dungeon. Now, the second thing is that some Craftopia reviews say that the game has a problem of trying to have too many concepts with improper implementation, leading to it excelling at nothing. There's actually a few uh, review, uh, yeah, reviews, Steam reviews of Craft uh, Craftopia that say that, and that's actually funny because that's a concern I had before I even read those reviews. I saw it on Discord. Someone was talking about the fact that it seems like they're trying to have so many things with this base building, guns, monsters, story, these overworld concepts, things like that, and it's obviously you have to balance it. There's definitely an implementation problem that can happen. Uh, has your scope went beyond what it should for your development team and the funds and the time, etc.? So it is a worry that Craftopia seems to be getting this critique that somebody else thought of and I think is completely reasonable. So the next one would be, I didn't get, first off, critique of myself, guys, stop saying so. But besides that, spread too thin. That's what some people are saying. Now, first off, separate dev teams. Dunn said that, so that mitigates a lot of that critique. Uh, or mitigates a lot of the problem of that critique if it was real, but it's not. So, also, there's no indication of spreading resources that are too thin. Like other resources. Uh, Non-labor um, resources. It doesn't seem like they're spreading themselves too thin on that. Now, the only possible reasonable worry is maybe they're spreading their... Um, money too thin, their funds too thin between two uh, projects, having a 15-man team and then a five-man team. But we don't know. So I think it's kind of baseless and purely speculative to have the spread too thin critique. First off, the dev teams are separate dev teams. So that's a huge thing gone. And the other two things, I think it's purely speculative and we really don't have any reason. The most reasonable being maybe the funds are too small. Don't even know. Don't Don't know. We have no reason to believe that, but I would say it's most reasonable one to possibly be concerned about because it is a small studio. Now, my critique, as I was talking about earlier, scope's too big. Scope is definitely too big. So the uh, critiques about uh, Craftopia, I you know, saw somebody say that uh, pretty much... I saw somebody say it in Discord before I saw it in the reviews. I even talked to Dr. Cielo Cefalo. I keep mispronouncing your name. I'm going to have to be going to the interview, which, hey, go watch the interview. Uh, most of a discussion. I really freaking liked it. Amazing. I think it's high caliber for this, uh, for the monster taming community kind of discussion. <laughs> um, They have many cool concepts. There's no ifs, ands, and buts about that. But... Trying to focus on everything can lead you to not being good at anything. It's like you're good at nothing. You know? You're not good at nothing. So that's really all I can think of when it comes to critiques. And that last one may be one of the most powerful ones. Is that maybe they have too big of a scope and they can't get it right. Now most critiques break down with some analysis. But some do hold up, like the uh, the real gun look. Over Dungeon was abandoned. And some are saying uh, that Craftopia really isn't good at anything. And, you know, it might have poor uh, implementation of results as a result of trying uh, to incorporate too many results. Uh, too many, not results, but too many concepts. Mm, so... The thing is, I think so many people are critiquing Power World unfairly. If it's a subjective preference thing, cool, but just say it. 
Just say you don't like it. Just say, here's why, here's my value for it. And you know what? I can see why other people would like it. Don't have a moral problem with it. But pretty much these moral problems, these real problems with it, mostly break down. Completely. Some completely break down, honestly. But the only three are, in my view, not enough to become unoptimistic, to become pessimistic about Pal World. I'm still somewhat optimistic, not overly optimistic. You can over optimism is insane. But I think there is reason to be optimistic long term about Pal World. I will not be getting early access EA access. I will not be buying that. I'm going to be making a video about well, early access, microtransactions, and DLC. And I think there's two heroes there, one villain. And I'll be talking about it in that video. Again, go watch the podcast video or episode I've been talking about. It's some, I think, some high caliber discussion and fun discussion, to be honest, regarding games and monster taming games and things like that. And honestly, we just talked for so long. It seemed like we touched on every subject and talked about what we wanted to talk about pretty freaking thoroughly. Now, that's all for this video. Thank you for staying through this video. It's a, one of my longer videos. It's not a gameplay video. I just made this script. I thought, you know what? I'm going to be writing about it. I had to write it down on paper, just the high points, just because I was starting to think, oh, this point. Oh, yeah, I forgot about this point. <laughs> uh, scripts definitely help if you're doing video scripts. Help. Anyways, that's all for this video. I'll see you in the next one. And retro on.